Slow Burn Media, Evergreen Podcasts, and Killer Podcast presents Who Killed, a podcast that provides a voice for the voiceless. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Who Killed. I am your host, Bill Huffman, and this is a Slow Burn Media, Evergreen Podcasts, and Killer Podcast production. We are going to wrap up our conversation with the one and only Matt Mangino about the Delphi case and what's going to be happening in the coming month with the trial. And he breaks down some of what the uh, legal wranglings have been occurring within that case and what uh, this bodes for the future. So it's an interesting case to watch. We've all been following this case since it happened. As you know, we are friends with Kelsey German, and this is all about getting justice for Libby and Abby, and, um, you know, having Kelsey been on the show, it definitely makes this case a little bit closer to the heart, so this is definitely a good breakdown of what has been occurring uh, within the state of Indiana and the case against um, Allen. So, We shall see what occurs, but uh, this is about the most up-to-date information you're going to get on the case in Delphi. So enjoy part two of my conversation with defense attorney Matt Mangino. Let's transition into another case, and that is the case of the Delphi girls, uh, Libby and Abby, and the trial that is uh, about to begin next month. Yeah. And uh, that seems um, like it was supposed to start, I think, in the fall, and it's been moved up to now. Now, what's going on with that? Is that a speedy trial thing or what? No, I, I think it's, you know, the defense wants, wants to move the case along uh, quicker. Uh, you know, it's not often that you see a case, you know, scheduled out for months and months, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, the the defense wants to move it, and and the judge says, okay, we'll try this case next month. Um, you know, so you know that that's uh, that was a, a an interesting turn of events in this case. And and you know, this case, as you know, Bill, is a wild case. I mean, you know, if if you were writing a script for a movie and you brought it in to a producer, he'd say, well, you know, this is crazy. I, I mean, you know. I mean, people watch how, a lot how, of yeah, yeah. They they watch a lot of trials. They're not going to buy this, and and yeah. that's where we are. You know, what's the what's the most what's the most fascinating thing that you've uh, witnessed in this case, and like what the hell is going on? Because I know it from a from my perspective, it is kind of like what the you know WTF is going on here, and from a lawyer's perspective, what is going on here? I mean. This is super weird, you know, the way that it's been represented, mm-hmm. then not represented. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it, it's, it, I, I haven't, I have to really think hard to, to remember anything even remotely close to this, where basically uh, the judge fires the defense attorneys, um, you know, you know, alleges some, you know, ethical issues with regard to, uh, photographs that were unknowingly taken of other photographs and then leaked out uh, to the media. And, you know, the defendant wants these guys to represent him, uh, but the, the judge dismisses them. They, you know, uh, they agree to it at first because, you know, basically they say she threatened him with, you know, maybe ethical um, misconduct charges if they don't withdraw from the case they withdraw then they turn around and say we want to come back the case gets appealed the supreme court i believe it is says hey we're 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 going to put these guys back on the case now you have pending um um uh, contempt charges against them for some of the for some of these issues uh you know the lawyers the lawyers for ellen have their own lawyer i mean you know, so, so there's a guy out there who's representing them on some of these issues and who's out there talking to the media because the gag order that has been contentious in his case doesn't apply to him. So, you know, we're sitting here with a case about to go to trial 
when the lawyers have their own lawyer and there's contempt charges against them for you know leaking information and other issues it, it's incredible yeah you know i think about you know when i interviewed kelsey and what the family has been through and then you have to have this leak uh a, a graphic leak of you know I, things i don't even know about don't want to know about not mm -hmm. looking for it don't look for it uh, it's just not my thing. And I understand that people are morbid like that, but that's just, uh, disgusting. And the basic aspect that our basic view that I have of this case is that it's been kind of a cluster fuck from the start. <laughs> I mean, if you think about what they did and, you know, we've been to crime con together, we've, yeah. we've been there. I remember, you know, the ISP doing a big presentation with the family and, you know, it, it was like, oh, we're working really, really hard in this case. And and it's like, I don't want to rag on um, police work because, you know, they do a great job. But in this particular case, I feel like they totally dropped the ball by letting this guy live free for sure. as long as he did when they had the evidence that they eventually used to arrest him. Right. So to me, it's just, it's sad for the family and it's sad that, this guy is, I mean, he's again, like we've talked about before, the defense is doing what the defense does, but the people that were in charge of this investigation, that were in charge of getting the evidence, collecting the evidence, putting two and two together, you know, they were putting two and two together and it was equaling six when they really knew the answer was four, but they just kept looking past it. I mean, do you, when you're a defense attorney, does that stuff become like something to use sustenance that you can use in defending your client? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, when you look at what you just explained, okay. So, so that they, they initially had a suspect in this case uh, who, you know, was even, I, I guess had had some contact with, with one of the young victims, you know, was, you know, trying to solicit photographs from, young girls online and all this other stuff. And, and then, you know, you interview, um, you know, Ellen at the very outset of this investigation. And then you forget that you have a tape recorded interview with him for four years. Um, you know, listen, if you're a defense attorney, you know, that's the kind of stuff you salivate over. You say, well, I was going mean, to say, I got a lot, you know, I got some tools here, uh, you know, and, and you know, your job as a defense attorney is to create doubt. Now, in a lot of ways, the prosecution has handed you tools to work with to create this doubt. Now, are you going to be effective in, in using those, uh, you know, enough so that, that you can convince a jury that, hey, you know, I have, I have doubt. I have doubt about this because of this other guy, because we waited four years, because why didn't they arrest him four years ago? I mean, you know, so, so that's the kind of stuff that, that really, uh, you know, when a defense attorney sits down and, and you say, oh, man, this is a hopeless case. And then all of a sudden these things start popping up and just like, wow, we got a lot to work with here. Uh, so so, you know, that's what I think um, this case is all about. And so, you know, we talked about, you know, the the. Uh, uh, contempt issues with regard to the photographs and other issues with regard to, um, you know, releasing, you know, some information. But, you know, they, they also have, you know, some gripes with the prosecution, you know. So now the prosecution had multiple uh, interviews on tape that they deleted. They're gone. I mean, why? Yeah. I mean, and, and then you had this other interview that you forgot about for four years, which was pretty important. The guy, said he was on the bridge that day when the, when these um, young women were killed. So, I mean, how does that not go front and center, like, of your file? I mean, on the bridge, right. you know, yeah. in, like in, in movie form, you know, let's right. put the, the little strings and the red string, connect the dots. Yeah. Hey, let's make a, a, a list of all the people that said they were on the bridge that day. Oh, look, it was only like three people. Maybe we should focus on those three people. And yeah. they didn't do that for years and yet they were going around saying we're doing everything we can mm -hmm. and it was like almost like 
and I and I'm and I'm not saying this is the case, but it did when it came out that the, they had all this information for years. It kind of felt like they were going on like a PR tour of like, look at look at us, look what we're doing, and yeah. instead of actually digging into the evidence, and that to me is completely ass backwards in mm -hmm. my opinion because you know let the families go and be advocates for themselves i understand that some you know isp wants to be involved blah 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 but you know when you sort of drop the ball like this it's sort of um it's embarrassing you know because yeah. you look back and you look at all these opportunities where they could have put this person behind bars and they did not i mean if i'm a defense attorney i'm going well, what about all these other guys? And what about all this other evidence that you may not have looked at or you forgot about? Yeah. I, again, to me, no, it's just I, so I, I agree. weird. Yeah, it, 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 it's, um, you know, it, it is, I'm sure, so, uh, you know, frustrating uh, for the, the victim's families, you know, for this to go on and on and on. And then, and then really, you know, what this whole thing has turned into uh, you know, this kind of circus about the lawyers and, and about information and about contempt. Hey, two young girls were brutally murdered. Bottom line. And, yeah. And here, you know, what we're talking about and what, um, you know, the Indiana Supreme Court and, and other judges and prosecutors and the state, what they're talking about is, well, what happened uh, to the records? How did we accidentally delete them? You know, how'd you let this guy take photographs of, of these photographs of this You know, how, how did, why did the judge, the judge fire the lawyers? Those aren't, this is, this is about the murder of two innocent uh, young girls. And we've gone off on a tangent. Um, it's become a sideshow yeah. uh, to the actual case. And then you're a hundred percent right. At the end of the day, this is about Abby and Libby. And if the justice isn't served, uh, properly, then there's a potential that he could get off. And then mm -hmm. you just don't want to have a case like this, I would assume, that has so many, I guess, issues, but mm -hmm. um, maybe just gray areas of uh, of how, how it's been presented. I just find it as someone who's looked into a lot of cases and seen a lot of things go through the system fairly smoothly this one seems to be completely the opposite like yeah. it's just not moving the way and the pace that i have become accustomed to seeing we took we joked about law and order earlier before we were on the air um and i know the cases aren't solved in an hour and i know everybody knows that but um this case happened so long ago and it took so many years just to catch this guy. And it just feels like the poor families have been dragged along and had to witness this. And I mean, I don't know what their thoughts are about the investigation at this point, because I don't know what I would feel. I mean, I guess I would feel like, why weren't you doing any, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to, yeah. I shouldn't question. I just, uh, having met Kelsey a number of times, yeah. mm -hmm. um, I just feel for that family and for what they've been through. And just to think that it's finally coming to a head here um, next month. How long do you anticipate a trial like this taking? Uh, well, I, I think if, if I'm not mistaken, I, I saw that like they uh, had um, set aside like half of the month of May from the 13th to the 31st or something like that. D don't quote me on that. Uh, I, I thought I read that somewhere, but, you know, it, it just depends. I mean, sometimes, you know, cases uh, can be much shorter than you anticipated. Uh, and at times they can be longer. I mean, you know, if you if you look at the what is it, the young thug case, I mean, that 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 trial might go on for years. I mean, it, it's just uh, uh, incredible. So so you, you just don't know how, how things will will unfold. But I, I think if I if I'm correct, the judge set aside about uh, two and a half weeks. At least that's what the court 
um, anticipates that this trial will take. And, and you know, again, it, it's going to be interesting, you know, to see how um, how some of these issues sort of unfold during the course of this trial. Um, you know, the prosecution, you know, they're, they're going to present the evidence that they have and, and try to do it as methodically and as, as concise as they can do it. You know, there's a lot of kind of, uh, you know, once the trial starts, all the other sideshow is over. Okay. So, so we're not going to be talking about, uh, you know, why didn't we get these tapes before they were destroyed or why did it, you know, you were going to hear about why didn't you charge them for four years, but we're not going to hear about contempt. We're not going to hear about photographs that were leaked. All that stuff is going to be gone. And we're going to be dealing with the facts of this case. And one of the facts is, you know, why, why did you wait so long? You know, why did you forget about this videotape? You know, did you, did you put, did you have tunnel vision and just look at this first suspect and then not consider other people? And then when you realized you were on the wrong trail, you scrambled to find it. You know, a, a new defendant. Uh, you know, th those are the kind of things I think we're going to hear uh, from the defense. But I think you know the prosecution is going to try to, you know, to, to to make this, and it should be about the facts and the evidence. And 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 you don't have to have an eyewitness, as you we know. I mean, you can prove these cases circumstantially, and that's what they're going to have to do in in this situation. But I think it'll be an interesting trial. You know, with that being said about being only two and a half weeks, not being a lawyer, again, mm -hmm. just to make sure, uh, everybody knows, um, what makes a case that seems like it would take a lot longer than two and a half weeks be set aside for two and a half weeks while other trials, they seem to go on for months and months and months mm -hmm. and sometimes years what makes the difference? Is it just the amount of evidence or is the amount of witnesses? It is, what plays into that? Well, you know, I, I think a lot of it has to do uh, with, you know, what, you know, the type of evidence that you're trying to present. Okay. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're trying to, pre if you're presenting a lot of scientific evidence that's connecting people, you know, through DNA and other things, then you, you know, you might end up having a clash of experts so you, so that's going to take some time and so so you know you you have your expert they have their expert but then you have another expert who says their expert's wrong i mean that's you know things can get you know can get really far afield you know when you're talking about as we talked about you know phone records and and, and things like that you have to authenticate all that stuff you have to be able to to show how you you, you, you were able to determine somebody's location. So, so things like that can get, can get really involved sort of in the minutia of, of what, what's going on. The other thing that, you know, that draws trials out and a lot of trials, um, nowadays is that you, you, you have to prove, so to speak, some things that you never had to prove in the past. You, you have to, you got, you have to present to the jury things that you didn't find because they want to know why you didn't find. Okay. And, and, and so, for example, you know, so, 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 you know, that's sort of like, and a lot of people refer to that as the CSI effect. So, ah. so the people, they, they want, and you know, where's the fingerprints? Well, why did you get fingerprints off of that can that was laying that I saw in the photograph along the bank? Well, you know, 15 years ago, you looked at that can, you knew it had been there for two months. And the, and the, and the homicide happened three days ago. So of course, you know, it has nothing to do with the case. But now, because people, want, they, they know so much about the forensics and all this stuff. And it's, we, you know, every case you watch on television and we go back to television again, you know, there's, there's DNA, there's fingerprints, there's hair samples, there's all these things. You have to tell people why you didn't test that can. So, so someone has to get up and say, yes, we marked that can as an exhibit. Uh, we brought it in. We didn't find any fingerprints on it. And we estimated it had been there two months, which, which certainly indicates it wasn't part of this crime. you got to prove those things that you never had to prove before because of the high expectation of jurors. That's so interesting. And I've heard the CSI effect before. 
uh, you know, this isn't Perry Mason law, law, you know, this isn't right. like, uh, here are the facts, ma'am, um, dragnet style, you know, mm -hmm. the days of old are definitely gone. And to think that you're right, you have to prove all these other things that why you didn't do this or why this wasn't mm -hmm. the case. And yeah, I guess I could see that being one of those things that really takes up a lot of time, yeah. but I guess the, the, with a case just like as nationally known as this, I just feel like, man, that seems like a pretty quick case. But then again, what do I know? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I think that, the, you know, there's a lot of factors that, that go into the, the length of a case. And a lot of it has to do too with, you know, what, what latitude the judge, you know, what, what's the judge going to let you do? Um, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you file motions in limine, you know, motions before the trial where you, you want the court to rule on an admissibility of, of evidence or statements or other things before the trial even begins. So you, you know what, what's going to happen. Uh, and sometimes the, the judge shuts you down in these motions in limine and says, well, we're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. Boom. That, that, that takes, you know, some of your case away from you. Um, you know, right at the outset. So, so, you know, the judge may have a notion, Hey, you know, this is going to be a no nonsense trial and, and, um, we're going to, we're going to keep it on the rails. Yeah. That's, uh, it's gotta be a very, uh, different, uh, difficult balancing act. I would assume as being a, a judge in, in a case like this, um, where you're kind of battling, do you know? If, do you know if they're going to allow cameras in the courtroom, or is that something that has not been discussed yet? Um, I, I thought that I just read uh, that that the that the um, the court was considering uh, not letting uh, cameras into the into the courtroom and has limited access, you know, to this point. Um, you know, that would really. Um, that would really throw a wet blanket on the uh, the courties and the uh, ID addicts and all the people that are anticipating they're going to be able to watch this blow by blow. Uh, yeah. But you know the the court um, you know ha has a lot of different reasons why it, it might want to uh, keep the courtroom dark. But um, I guess we'll see. As somebody who works in that industry, is that something mm -hmm. that and somebody who works also works in law? what would you, I mean, do you have a preference? I mean, obviously mm -hmm. in this line of work, you'd be like, yeah, I'd want the cameras because you want to yeah. see more. But as a lawyer, how would you feel about it? Well, um, you know, I would think, and I believe that the cameras in the courtroom are a good thing. Um, I, I think that they've done a lot to, to educate people about the process. I, I think it's done a lot to, uh, you know, open uh, the doors of the courtroom, you know, you know, people just don't have time like they did 80 years ago uh, for entertainment to go down to the courthouse uh, after lunch and watch a couple hours of the trial. Um, and people did that. I mean, that, you know, that was that was a form of uh, of entertainment. I mean, you know, you know, look at the some of the famous movies we talked about them before the show, you know, the kill a mockingbird. I mean, the, you know, that it that depicts what it was like. I mean, people went to these trials and watched them and and they looked at the lawyers and the judges, you know, almost as, you know, stars who were who were presenting uh, the case. Um, you Even know, the but, killers. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, look right. at Bundy, look at look at the Menendez, yeah. look at the, the Night Stalker. You know, these all had, you know, fans yeah. in the audience. Yeah. And apparently well, there's Coburgers yeah. fans out there, too, which I'm is sure disgusting. I'm sure I'm sure he's getting a lot of uh Fan mail, so uh, in jail. It's, we, it's weird. It's just a yeah. weird. It's a weird world, and it's like it. I'd like to say that it has something to do with our, our current society, but <laughs> that is not true because it's. No. You know, if you look back, and I mentioned Sam Shepard earlier, but it's a case that was in my neck of the woods, and mm -hmm. you know, I grew up about five miles away away from right. where that case happened, and the Cleveland press, and then the way that the plane dealer covered it, and. I mean, that was a sensational trial. And then, the you know, he gets a girlfriend who turns out to be a German, you know, 
she went to Hitler's youth Nazi camps and and she becomes his her, her his benefactor and it's just to me it's there is got to be a series one day about those women because yeah. what it is about them especially when the case is beyond a reasonable doubt when you have like a Bundy or a Night yeah. Stalker or something like that where it's just cut and dry no pun intended at all hmm. um what is the high there? Yeah. I mean, have you ever crossed anything like that in your career? Well, you know, occasionally, you know, you, you know, I will get a call, um, you know, someone is in state prison and they need, you know, some advice on parole, their interviews coming up. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a woman or a man, you know, calling me from, uh, you know, Kansas City. Now, wait a second. This guy's been in jail for 10 years. Uh, you're his fiance and you live in Kansas City. You know, you got to connect the dots and, and you worry, you know, is this person being taken advantage of? You know, they, 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 are they, you know, I, I would ask somebody like that, well, who, if you were to retain me, who, who's going to pay? Or you're not paying the bill, are you? Because if, if they are, then I, I wouldn't be involved in, in the case because yeah, that's, they, they meet on, in prison on these websites and iPad and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's incredible, uh, what people will do, uh, to have a companion to, to talk to, uh, on a, on a prison telephone. But, uh, you know, the, the other thing that I wanted to say about cameras in the courtroom, I said, I wish, you know, as a, as a young law student and even as a young lawyer that, that, you know, there was uh, law and crime and court TV and all these other uh, avenues to watch live trials because I had to watch them every day. And, and, you know, and, and I think you certainly can learn some positive things as a young lawyer from watching other lawyers practice law. But I can only imagine. That, yeah. But the thing that, that, that I would have, I think, relished watching these more than anything else is like, I can do that. I mean, you know, this guy ain't all that. I mean, he's I, not a I rock star. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, hey, so, if he's a I rock mean, star, would, I'm a rock star. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it would have been for me a huge confidence booster to be able to watch lawyers, some of them doing great and some of them not doing so great uh, and really getting an understanding that, hey, you know, this isn't beyond my reach you know, as a young man, late, you know, obviously later in your career, after you get experience, you know, you're, you're doing it yourself. But as a young guy, a young lawyer that wants to be a trial lawyer, I would tell him when you're not studying or when you are studying, watch court TV, watch law and crime, watch the other live stream trials, because you can learn a lot. You know, it's, it's crazy too, to think that uh, 98% of cases are pled out and you know how few lawyers get trial experience right i mean is it is it gotten to the point where is it it's a lot less than it used to be oh yeah yeah okay. i mean there, you know you might find even in in you know small you know smaller counties outside of metropolitan areas you, you know you, you might have one trial a month civil mm -hmm. or criminal you know maybe two if the, if the docket's really busy now, of course, in, in, in urban areas, in, you know, you're going to have a lot more trials than, than you would, but, but, you know, by and large, you know, on a federal level, it's like 98% of federal cases end up in pleas and, and it's like 96 in, in the state court, you know, when you, it's just, it, it, there are no trials, you know, That's and, crazy. and what's troubling about that when you look at it from a constitutional aspect, when a case is being resolved by a plea, okay, the prosecution is never proving anything beyond a reasonable doubt, okay, because you've accepted responsibility, you pled guilty, they didn't have to prove anything beyond a reasonable doubt. You know, so, so that idea that, hey, we, we, we have this burden and we should have this burden in America that you got to prove somebody guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, doubt hey, very few people are being proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in this country. I think that is messed up. 
Hmm. And that's uh, from your perspective, I can't imagine that's, I mean, that's got to be frustrating for you to, to witness. And well, it, it is. And I mean, you know, and, and there's obviously, you know, if you committed a crime, you, you know, you should plead guilty to it. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't feel bad for guys who committed crimes who have to plead guilty. I feel bad for people who maybe because they've committed crimes in the past and they have a prior record and they've been accused of another crime, but they face severe punishment because of their history. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that, that they will plead guilty to a crime they didn't commit just for lenient. Um, it goes back to what you were saying yeah. about the proper representation as, yeah. and making sure yeah. that they knew that that plea deal was there. Mm-hmm. And, but you're so you're, but you're bringing it from the other perspective on, right. At, right now, which is interesting. So mm-hmm. yeah, that, that, yeah, that's, um, that's why, that's why I love to have you on. Yeah. And, uh, do you have any final thoughts on what to expect with Delphi? Uh, well, I, I think it'll. I think it. Uh, it's going to be an interesting trial, especially you know it's right around the corner. Um, you know we're we're going to find out. Uh, you know what what they have in terms of the prosecution. We're going to find out what the defense is going to do. I think it's going to be an interesting trial to watch. And and um, you know the, I, I I would like to end on just saying hey I, it's it's great. Uh, to talk to you. I love it every time uh, we we get together. Um, I think your uh, podcast, you know, Who Killed is is outstanding, you know, some of the best work in in the business. Uh, And and so I'm always checking out who you're talking to and what you're talking about. And once in a while, I borrow a few things from you or your your other guests. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you at CrimeCon. Yep, CrimeCon 2024 in Nashville, uh, coming up at the end of May. Um, now, where can f- people find you online and on television? Uh, well, you know, online, I, I have a uh, blog in, in which I, you know, keep track of all of my um, different forays into uh, television and, and other things, uh, you know, like your show. And that, that's at uh, mattmangino.com. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm on Twitter and I, I try to get out and, uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I just started, um, uh, writing, uh, well, the first of the year, a syndicated column for, uh, creators syndicate. So I have a column that comes out every week, uh, cool. um, on law and order issues. So I'm excited about that. And as we talked about briefly, I'm, I'm working on the outline of a book about, uh, five, uh, classic, um, Hollywood trials, uh, trial movies. And, uh, you know, within a short period of time, 1957 and 1962, you know, some of the classic uh, trials of that sort of golden age of of Hollywood trials. Uh, And I'm actually going to be presenting on that um, at CrimeCon. So I'm really, I'm really excited about it. I'll definitely have to check that out. I look forward to it. And uh, again, I always appreciate your time and your expertise. And again, as these trials unfold and these cases move forward, I look forward to having you back on. Great. I'd love it. All right. Good talking to you. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Many thanks to the one and only Matt Mangino for joining me on Who Killed to break down the Delphi case. I know a lot of people are interested in the results in this court case. And again, this is all about finding justice for Libby and Abby. So... Again, we got the case coming up in May, and this will be very interesting stuff to observe, but I will say that this is, again, a family thing, and it is something that we should respect the privacy of Libby and Abby's families during this time, and let's not speculate too much about what the outcomes will be. Let's just let the process play out. I brought a professional on today to kind of break it down so we weren't just speculating and talking into the wind as so many of us do on social media so here is to uh, a swift trial justice and i hope some sort of closure which we know there is no such thing but nonetheless i do believe it's important to bring their killer to justice and hold those people accountable so 
Again, as you know, I drop new episodes every Friday, and sometimes I have guests, sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's a rerun, sometimes it's not. So, just so you know, I am uh, around, and if you want to follow me, you can do so at BillHuffman3, and that is on Twitter. And again, as you know, until next time, as always, stay healthy and be safe. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Are you tired of seeing your teen or young adult struggle on a path that clearly isn't the right fit? Is your teenager confused about which direction to take after high school? The future of work is changing rapidly. And our kids need to know all of the options available after high school so they're empowered to make the choice that is best for them. In each episode, we explore the latest trends that are shaping the opportunities of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Betsy Jewell, and this is the High School Hamster Wheel Podcast. 